folks, welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily and today is Sunday, March 19th and I thought I would do a little bit of a vlog. It's a really lovely sunny Sunday morning and coming up on this week I have the second week of my school's March break so I won't be going into school but I'm certainly going to be uh, very busy with some interview prep and just finishing grading some of the midterms before the end of the break so that when we come back from the break and my report cards are due, I have time to put all the comments together and all of that. So I thought that I would give myself this weekend to really just like chill. So that's what I'm doing. Um, this evening, mine and Adam's real estate agent is going to be coming over and we're putting in an offer on another condo that we're more excited about than the last one that we missed out on. So my fingers are crossed for that. And that's also kind of like another reason why I really just can't be doing teacher work <laughs> this weekend. Um, so my plan for the day is just to do some knitting and do some cooking. I'm going to make some shakshuka for Adam and I, and that means some homemade naan that I really like to make. And I also want to make some banana bread for when our agent comes over. Just have a little something to snack on this evening. So that's what today is going to be. What I'm going to be knitting on today is a test knit for Rebecca Klo, who is Crea Bea. I'm working on one of my samples of the Tolsta Tea. Um, and I say one of my samples because I'm working pretty off gauge for this. And so I've gone up two needle sizes on this particular sample. And I'm going to be knitting a second sample at the appropriate gauge at my assigned size. Um, but really so far so good with the pattern. It's super clear. Everything seems to be working out for me so far. I'm loving the fabric that I'm coming up with. So I think that this is the correct way to hold it for front and back. This is what I have so far. Now, as I said, I did go up to a size five as opposed to a size three for this particular sample. So I'm curious to see what happens with this neckline once things are blocked out. But I am really, really liking the fabric that my two yarns are giving me. I don't tend to knit garments with super variegated yarns. I've knit, well, I mean, my traveler's cardigan, this is like, in my opinion, not really variegated. The yarn is sort of spun to be really colorful. And I've knit with speckles before for a garment, but not so much variegated yarn. So I really like that this is super subtle, kind of like I, I've been calling it like moody mermaid vibes. And so I'm using Walk Collection Linnea, and this is the colorway Twister, and I just hand wound the ball. Uh, and I'm at the very end of my first ball of the Isagur Bomulin, which is 65% cotton, 35% linen. And this is, I think, 50% alpaca, 25% silk, 25% linen. Um, so these fibers combined, I think are gonna give me a fabric with really, really nice drape that's appropriate for sort of transitional weather. Maybe not like the height of summer here in Toronto when it's 30 degrees, but certainly a really great garment for the spring and the fall. So this is where I'm at. The raglan on this tee is quite wide set, which is something that I actually really like because as a person with broad shoulders or relatively broad shoulders, I believe um, when a raglan is more narrow or cuts closer to the midline, I find it sort of makes the proportions look a little off. So I'm looking forward to getting to splitting sleeves, hopefully today on this. Um, and doing a little bit more of a fit check. So this is what Sunday is going to be. And I hope that whenever you're watching this, you are having a relaxing time, taking a few minutes for yourself to find some balance, to find some calm. 
I am one of those people, or at least I really used to be one of those people um, who felt really, really guilty taking time for myself. And sometimes I still do, but I've really made an effort to like shift my perspective to like, breaks aren't meant to serve my productivity breaks are meant to serve me and my health and my well-being and if i'm doing that then my productivity will be improved where and when it needs to be so i hope you're finding that for yourself as much as possible as well let's get into the rest of the day just had some tuna sandwiches and soup for lunch but for dinner I am going to be making one of our favorite meals which is shakshuka and when I do that I like to make some homemade naan to go with it so to make sure the dough has some time to rise I'm gonna prepare it now before I get into my afternoon knitting so enjoy I like this recipe because it's pretty straightforward. I start with a third of a cup of cream and then a third of a cup of sour cream. You can also use plain Greek yogurt, but I find that when I use sour cream instead of Greek yogurt, the dough comes out a little bit silkier, I guess, which I like quite a lot. I have my cream and my sour cream in this bowl and I'm just going to mix them together just so they're pretty well combined and homogenized. I don't want any chunks of sour cream left in here. And this is gonna go in the microwave for 30 seconds. So you wanna make sure that your sour cream and milk mixture is more warm than it is hot because I'm about to add yeast to it and I don't want to scorch the yeast. I just want it to be warm enough so that the yeast will bloom once I feed it some sugar. So to the third cup of milk and the third cup of, to the third cup of milk and the third cup of sour cream, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of yeast. This is active dry yeast. I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of sugar so that the yeast has something to munch on. I'll stir all that up. So now this is going to sit for about five minutes. So the yeast has some time to bloom and I should hopefully start to see some bubbles that tell me they're awake and they're active. And then we'll add a little more to this. You can kind of see now that the yeast is sort of, I mean, melted is not really accurate, but it is pretty well combined with that dairy mixture that we started with. And so to this, I'm gonna add one egg and three tablespoons of olive oil.
Now I can add all of the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients. I just have two cups of AP flour and a teaspoon of salt in here, and then I can knead the dough. Maybe wearing black wasn't the best choice for working with flour. <laughs> I'm just gonna knead the dough together for about five minutes to get all of the flour combined, but also get it um, to activate the gluten in the flour and have more sort of elasticity. So that is the prep for the homemade naan recipe that I like to use and I'll be sure that I include it down below for you as a link. But until I'm ready to cook this, I am going to put it in a bowl with a little bit of olive oil, cover it with a damp cloth and leave it to rest and ideally double in size. So it's just after 4 p.m. and I have spent the afternoon working on the yolk of my Tolsta Tea test knit. So this has gone really fast. I cast it on, I think, Thursday morning. I did the short rows Friday evening and then Saturday and Sunday I've done the yolk. So I'm going to try this on and make sure that the yolk depth is where I want it to be and if I need to add a few rows of just plain stockinette to get it to fit, I will, but I'm hopeful that I can just leave this on this tubing and separate for sleeves tomorrow, probably give my, give my arms a bit of a break. This afternoon has been okay. I'm getting a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous for this evening when we put in the offer on the condo. So I've been trying to keep myself distracted. Adam and I are gonna start cooking uh, dinner soon, preparing the banana bread, rolling up the Nondo, all of those things. So really for now, all there is to do is try this on and see where we're at. So let's do it. I have so much hair. So this is the yolk depth, I think. It's always hard to tell with like the back side of the garment as well, how it's going to be. But I think that because I'm knitting this one in the size five, when my actual size is a size three, because my gauge is off, I think it's possible that my row gauge is also off a little bit. So, I mean, that fits. I don't think it's supposed to have much positive ease and I'm pretty sure there will be stitches to cast on at the underarm. And certainly once this is blocked and it has a lot more weight to it, that'll be pulled down quite a bit. So I think this is actually, I think this is good. I think I'll be happy to split for sleeves here. And I was concerned about the width of the neck because as I said, I cast on for two sizes bigger than my typical size. Um, but even if it grows a little bit more than this, I think it'll just be like an open, you know, slightly more wide neck t-shirt for the spring. I really like this color. I think it's a good, it reads more green, I guess, overall. I think it definitely reads more green overall. And I think part of that is because of the Isagur Bomulin, which is like really a true sage green gray kind of colorway. So not mad about it. I think it's turning out pretty well so far. And I think it looks really nice 
there's like a good level of contrast between this and my hair, which I think is lovely. Whereas like you compare it with, with the black, my hair sort of more so blends in. But yeah, we're ready to split for sleeves. That's really exciting because that's moving really fast. And I am guaranteed to have time to knit my second version at the right gauge. Good morning. So it's Monday now and last night was pretty bananas, kind of nerve wracking, uh, but Adam and I were quite calm through all of it. Lots of things aligned for us. Really do believe it was meant to be. And so we did end up getting the condo, which is so exciting. We did a little happy dance in the elevator as we were leaving our agent's place. Just feels really, really good. What that means is today there's a few errands that need to be run. I have to go to the bank, gotta meet with some lawyers, got to go for a massage appointment that I scheduled just to take care of, well, um, my elbows because I've had a little bit of, of discomfort in my like neck, my upper back and my arms, I think because of knitting. So just wanna see, you know, if anything can be done about that. And in between all of that, I have some teacher work to do. So I'm going to walk over to a nearby coffee shop or a library and see what we can't get done before I have to go to the bank. So we're just gonna continue on today. Happy Monday. It's actually now Tuesday and I just finished having some breakfast and I've made myself a massive, an absolutely massive iced coffee. It is half decaf, half caffeinated with a lot of ice, a lot of milk, um, and I use a little bit of brown sugar to sweeten it. So just been hanging out this morning so far. I'm gonna finish this video today, but before I do, I wanted to share with you the progress on my body now on the Twelsta T chest knit. I did separate for sleeves yesterday. I think I'm about two or three inches into the body. So I wanted to try that on one more time, share that with you. And I also wanted to catch you up on my yarn tracking for the month. So if you didn't know, this year, my goal for my yarn stash, my yarn collection, 
is to end the year with a net negative stash as significantly as possible, but I'm not imposing any yarn buying bans on myself for the time being. Um, we did just buy a condo, so I might have to slow down on the yarn buying for a little bit, but what that means is I'm tracking all the yarn that comes in each month and all the yarn that goes out each month, and I'm splitting it up into like all yarn added. Um, I am tracking if I'm purchasing the yarn or if it's yarn that's gifted to me, um, yarn used and yarn decluttered. So yarn used and yarn decluttered for what goes out and yarn purchased or yarn gifted um, that's coming in and then looking at the net change each month and where that leaves my total. A couple reasons for this. First reason is I have plenty of wonderful yarns that I'd like to prioritize using. Second, financially, just makes sense to use what I have. Sustainably, it makes more sense to use what I have. Um, but I also think it's important for me in terms of intentionality and in yarn buying, really making sure that I'm curating a collection of yarns that I like and I love that aren't going to fall out of my favor because they're sitting around in my stash for a long time. And I have a whole other video on intentionality in yarn purchasing. And I want to be really clear that these aren't like rules that I'm following, just kind of like prompts, food for thought, things to think about because I definitely still make somewhat impulsive purchases, but I find even if I am making an impulsive purchase, even those can be made a little more mindful just by knowing what I like. So that's really long-winded, has nothing to do with the numbers. I started January, so I started 2023 with 77 units of yarn. So I'm counting 100 grams gains, 50 grams gains, 25 gram balls of mohair, 250 gram balls, like all of those, a unit counts as a unit. So I started the year with 77 units of yarn and I did a lot of decluttering in January. So I gave away a lot of yarns to some of my colleagues that I knew I wasn't going to be using to sort of further that sense of like curating my yarn collection. And I used 21 units of yarn, which sounds like a lot, um, but I had knit a stripy pair of socks and they were DK weight socks with fingering weight yarn and a mohair. So that pair of socks alone counted as like 10 units or nine units of yarn. So that was quite a lot, but I added 13 units of yarn in January. So it was a net change of minus 20. I went into February then with 57 units of yarn. In February, I purchased four units of yarn. I got the skein of Cheeky DK in the colorway Charlotte from the Knitting Loft, like their house brand yarn. And I used that skein for a Valentine's Day hat. Really cute, really fun. And then I purchased my three balls of Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in Dusty Banana, and that was for the Victoria Scarf Test Knit. So I brought in four units in February. I used nine units in February. So the Cheeky DK, I used that up for the hat. I used two balls of yarn and a pair of socks for a friend. I had knit out two skeins of my Noro yarn to finish up my Traveler's Cardigan by Ozetta. I used one unit of yarn for the Sophie scarf that I'm still working on. Um, and I used two units of yarn to make felted dryer balls. And then one unit for getting started on my Victoria scarf. So that means for February, my net change was minus five units of yarn, and I came into March with 52 units of yarn. So far in March, I've moved one unit of yarn into my sort of scrappy excavation blanket collection of yarns, 
and I'm not including scraps going into that blanket as units of yarn, other like full ball scraps or leftovers from projects I will hang on to if I think they're better suited to a different project and not that blanket. But I did move one unit into that, so that's one unit out. I did use another ball of the Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino to finish my Victoria Scarf test knit. So I did purchase a surplus of one ball of that yarn. Um, and so far with my Tolsta T test knit, I have knit one whole ball of the Bumulin and I am close to finishing the first skein of the Walk collection and the second skein or the second ball of the Isiger Bumulin. So in terms of the yarn that I've brought in so far in March, I bought two skeins of the Walk Collection Linnea in the colorway Twister for my Tolsta tea. I got four balls of the Isager Bomulin uh, in the colorway 23, also for the Tolsta tea. I got a skein of worsted weight, creamy colored cotton yarn from the thrift store. And I do think that is like a garments quantity of the yarn, but again, a unit to unit. So we'll count that as one. Um, and I, it works out that way because I'll have to use most, if not all of it up to count it as out. Um, and then I purchased one skein of Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in, I think the colorway is called Archaic not antique, maybe it's antique, I'm not sure. Um, but it's like a beige, like a nutty brown with these colorful speckles in it. And then one ball of Retrosaria Mondim in a bright orange colorway that I'm hoping will pair well with the Hedgehog Fiber Skinny Singles. I haven't gotten those yet, they're coming in an order, so I'll be sure to share those with you once I have them. But so far what that means for March is we're at eight, nine units of yarn in and five units of yarn out so far. So at the moment, March is tracking to be my first month with a net positive change in my yarn stash, my yarn collection. That's totally okay. Still gonna be net negative for the year so far, um, but it's just interesting to see how the months vary, how the months differ in the yarn tracking. And one last thing I will say about yarn buying, um, and I'll actually encourage you if you don't watch Rachel from Night Sky Knitting, um, definitely do. She makes some really beautiful projects. She does some really fun color work. She's been working with some really um, rustic and local fibers lately, which is really, really cool to see. Um, and she's a great friend of mine now, which I'm so happy to say. And she talked, I can't remember if she did a like showing my stash video or just talking through her projects for the upcoming year. Rachel and I are like 25, 26, we're around the same age. Um, and up until quite recently, like having a very similar lifestyle, like she's still a student. And so she was talking about how a lot of her stash enhancing took place while she was working more and studying less so that when she no longer had the financial flexibility to invest in more yarns, she had things she really loved to work with. And I think that's a really important thing to discuss in the sense that you know, our financial circumstances can change and not necessarily like for better or for worse, but like lifestyle creep is definitely a thing. It's definitely something that I was worried about when I started working full time and it's definitely manifested itself in the um, price ranges of the yarns I feel comfortable purchasing. 
which like I'm so fortunate and I'm so grateful to be able to purchase these yarns for myself. A lot of that has to do with the hard work that I've put into my own education and my career, but also has a lot to do with the fact that I am able to generate income and I do generate income through high fiber knits. So thank you to you all so much for making that a possibility for me. But speaking of financial situations changing, like the big news of this video being that I am now super, super in debt with a mortgage, um, it's probably smart for me to pump the brakes a little bit with buying yarn and refocus on my stash with new vigor. I don't want to let the fact that I decluttered a lot of yarn in January trick me into believing that I am doing much better on my goal than I maybe am. I have purchased new yarns every month so far this year. Um, so maybe for the next several months, I will impose on myself a very gentle yarn buying ban. I don't know. I don't know if that would like work for me at all, but I'm definitely gonna have to think about restructuring the way I budget things going forward. And it's not for a bad reason. Like I'm so grateful that at 24 years old, we were able, well, I'm 24, Adam's 25. Um, but being as, as young as we are, we're very, very grateful to have had the opportunity and the circumstance work out for us that we are able to achieve one of these goals that's super important to to us so yeah it's a lot of really weird intersecting and rambly reflections on where i'm at with knitting and finances and personal life at the moment um but all of this to say that i have a lot of really wonderful yarns that I'm really looking forward to continuing to prioritize using. And on another note, I'm going to stay seated here while I show you my Tulsta tea. I'm really looking forward to trying this on right now because I think I'll start to get a better sense of what the neckline is going to be like. But this is what we've got today, this underarm all of this is what I made progress with yesterday. So we're doing pretty well. I think the body is supposed to be 25 or 30 centimeters. Um, I'll need to double check if that's measured from the underarm or measured from the back neck where it's already longest. But you can see there's a slight difference between front and back because of the short rows. Uh, but this is really going to be the true test of if it was a good call to split sleeves when I did, or if I probably perhaps should have knit a little bit longer. One other thing I'll point out, um, all of my tubing, this, I mean, you can get these at a lot of places now, like craft stores, maybe even hardware stores, knitting stores, um, but it's the type of tubing that you just pop onto your needle and it sticks pretty well and you can slide your stitches onto the cord to attach it from the needle and everything just sort of hangs out. I find them quite handy because they do make it faster to move stitches compared to transferring stitch by stitch with a needle, but I have almost every single time I've used these um, dropped several stitches accidentally so just beware, you do need to be careful and attentive. They do stay on the needle to a point, um, but I got mine, I think I got like 10, 10 meters, I think 10 meters, maybe 20 meters of this stuff for about $5 on Amazon, but it is handy stuff. One other thing, oh, I will say, um, for some reason, I thought it would be more effective. I don't know if you can tell, but this one is like cut to, trimmed to a point, and this one is trimmed to be blunt. And I thought having it trimmed to a point would 
work better than having it trimmed blunt, but when the stitches slide over the point, they will often get stuck underneath it. So if you're trimming them, if you have it and you need to trim them, trim them blunt. That is my recommendation. I actually think that's pretty good because again, once it's blocked, it's going to open up a lot more. I think the neckline is still looking pretty decent. Again, it's, it's wider than I might knit for a sweater, but for a summer tee, this is quite good. Oh my gosh. Wow. How wonderful. So once again, this is a size five, not my typical size three, and I am knitting it on a 4.5 millimeter needle for the body and the recommended four millimeter needle for the ribbing. I might, I might have done better to have knit this at like a 3.75, just cause it looks a little wonky. It feels like there's still a lot of elasticity, so it might just stretch out a lot over time. We'll have to see, but I think this fit is pretty good so far to work out the size that I needed to knit at my off gauge swatch. What I did was, you know, let me get this right. I know my body circumference. I know the circumference that I was aiming for. And so what I did was I found out how much each stitch was, like the width of each stitch, and then how many stitches I would need to get the body circumference I wanted. And I picked the size that aligned with that the best. When I do make these kinds of size modifications for my gauge, I try not to mess with the stitch counts too much, if at all. I might sometimes do like an extra raglan increase or something like that, but I'll never try to change the stitch count on the body or the sleeves or the neck or anything like that. And for the most part, that works pretty well for me because my body is quite rectangularly shaped. I don't need to make any like conscious modifications for having a larger bust or um, having like a significant taper in my body or anything like that. So that usually works out quite well for me. And because I do tend to wear garments with moderate to a lot of positive ease, this might be like the smallest amount of ease I've knit with since my Monica Geller tee by Sari Nordland two years ago now. Um, so I also don't have to worry too much about how the proportions might differ when you change garment sizes. So that's how I do it. Not saying it's the best way to do it, but I find it a very straightforward way for me to do it. And as we can see, the outcome so far is pretty darn good. So I'm going to keep working away on this and I'll definitely have more to share with you in upcoming podcast episodes. So yeah, thanks so much for joining me in this weird attempt at vlogging. I think at the very least, I'll be grateful to have just like some documented memory of this pivotal weekend uh, or like early week in my life. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. For the rest of the day, I will be doing my teacher work. And then I actually have my massage appointment this afternoon. I made a mistake with the dates and I got myself very confused. I like showed up and I was like, I have an appointment this afternoon. And they're like, no, you don't actually, it's tomorrow. So oops, I'm gonna go do that this afternoon instead. <laughs> so until I get to see you all again, I am wishing you health and happy knitting. Bye everyone.